Hello, today we're going to look at the uh, coolant and just check its level in this um, Toyota Vitz. We call it the, uh, the Vitz box. It's a Yaris in uh, markets outside Japan. So this particular Vitz box has the uh, 1.3 litre VVTi engine. And these old engines have a, what's called an overflow tank, which is sort of the uh, old school way of doing uh, coolant. The radiator's in there. Um, this is one of the main hoses, and it has the uh, radiator cap. It's actually on this little um, hose um, junction here, instead of actually being on the radiator, but same idea, that would be the radiator cap. And this next to it is uh, what's called the overflow tank. And you need to check the level under that in here. And there's also a level on this, um, on this overflow tank, which is actually quite hard to see. I'll take you for a dive because it is marked. You're now upside down, but you can see it's marked um, full and low, those lines. And those lines follow around to the side, so it's actually easier. Sorry if I'm making you motion sick. It's easier to look at them from the side. You can see the two lines there. Top one is full, bottom one is low. Other cars, like this Ford, uh, usually of the European variety, will um, increasingly these days have what's called an expansion tank, which is over here. Um, the expansion tank is different to an overflow tank because it is part of the pressurized system um, of, of the coolant system. There's no separation and it tends to be positioned um, at a high point in the engine bay, usually higher than the radiator. You can see the radiator in there. So this is higher, and the air, of course, um, is at the, uh, the high point where the air wants to be of the whole system. And um, this is simpler for the owner because you, you see there's the, the max line there and there's a, there's a min line down at the bottom. Um, you simply unscrew this and uh, fill your coolant up if you need to. Uh, it's self-bleeding and you don't really need to worry much about it. Back in Toyota land though, we don't have that system, we have the, the old overflow system. So the way this works is that this tank is not actually um, pressurized as is the rest of the cooling system. Um, the, this, there's a valve inside the radiator cap, which when it's under pressure, um, rather than your radiator exploding and uh, giving everybody a bad day, it will open and allow coolant to flood flow into the overflow tank which is not pressurized. You can see that this cap here just pops off. It's, um, it's obviously not something that would take any pressure. Um, so there are sort of two levels. This wants to be completely full, the radiator itself. And that, that, that's the whole engine radiator hoses assembly. That's full of coolant. Um, as it gets hot and the system um, becomes pressurized, any excess that it wants to bleed out, it will push into here. Similarly, it works in reverse when the, when, the, uh, when the car's hot and then it cools down after you finish using it, it might, as, as, it, as the um, system shrinks in here, it might then suck uh, some of the, the uh, fluid that's in this tank back in there. And it goes through this, uh, this cycle. So the way to, uh, to check this is um, when the system is uh, cold, you don't necessarily want this to be full because um, when it gets hot, it would then, you know, try to push more fluid into it. Uh, conversely, when it's, uh, when it's hot, you don't want it to be empty. Uh, the car at the moment, it, it, we've been driving it this morning. It's a little bit warm. What I'm going to do is uh, fill it up actually about halfway. Now, the reason that I'm uh, doing this is because I noticed when I looked that this tank is totally empty. You may have noticed that when I showed you the levels before, but there's not even any fluid in it to measure a level. It is almost bone dry. And if we open the radiator cap, there is fluid in there, but the level's a little bit low. So if you identify a low level like this, um, you might then need to start looking for leaks. Uh, in this car's case, I know a um, mechanic who did its um, road inspection uh, said that he could see a little bit of coolant weeping out of the water pump. Um, so that's something that's probably going to need to be replaced sometime soon. Not urgent yet, it's not a very bad leak, but um, that's the likely 
cause in this car's case. Uh, if it's not the water pump, then you need to look at the thermostat, um, all of these hoses, the radiator itself, the um, down at the bottom of the radiator where there are hoses down there. Um, usually coolant is colored quite brightly. You see the uh, you know, commonly red or orange or pink these days, uh, or, or bright green. Um, so coolant leaks can be fairly easy to see. Um, but you, uh, yeah, if, you, if you've got a leak, you'll need to fix that before you uh, bother putting fresh coolant in it, obviously. The first thing I'm going to do with this car is just put these caps back on, make sure they're watertight and everything, and just, um, uh, just give it a bit of a clean around all of these because they're quite manky and I don't want to uh, introduce dirt and uh, junk into, into the cooling system and the process of filling it. Now, commonly uh, you'll buy coolant um, in concentrate. You obviously need to get the correct specification, um, whatever Toyota wants in the car. And if you're going, you can also buy it in premix where you don't need to worry about um, introducing any water. If you do have concentrate, then you're gonna to need to mix it 50-50 or roughly 50-50 roughly with um, pure water, and it's important that you get um, actually, you know, pure distilled um, water. So I should have said this before, but um, don't ever take this cap off when the engine's hot, when it's when the car's just been running, or especially when it is running and hot, because um, you're, it, you know, this is this can be very hot, and you're likely to get a uh, face full of hot steam and um, boiling coolant. So don't do that. Make sure the engine's cooled down a bit first. I'm just going to pour this in carefully. And I realize I should just showed you a different bottle, but this, this is in fact the distilled water. I'm just going to carefully pour this in here until we get water close to the top. Now, the re I'm not actually using coolant because I don't have any premix of the Toyota specification. But because I'm only topping it up, it doesn't really matter because it's such a little volume of water that it's not going to affect the mix, and in addition to that, um, that water pump leaking, which needs replacing, means that the system's going to have to be um, emptied and drained and uh, flushed and refilled at some point in the near future anyway. So whatever we pour in there today is uh, just going to be wasted sometime soon. But you know, ideally you would obviously put coolant in, not just water. And for the tank, I am going to use the funnel just to make life a touch easier. Um, and the aim here with the, uh, the tank will be to fill it just about halfway because, as I said, I don't want it full because the car's not hot. And just above the low line, uh, the, the tank is a, uh, it's not a square shape, it's sort of uh, V-bottom, so it fills up faster at the, at, the, uh, at the bottom than it does toward the top. That's now about halfway, so that's perfect. Push this back on. What I'll do now is drive the car for a bit, and what will happen as the car goes through hot and cold cycles is that you'll get overflow into the tank, and the suck back, and the overflow, and the suck back. And um, after a few cycles, the coolant will mix, and you'll notice that the um, the color in here will, because I've just put water in. Of course, it's not colored coolant color yet, but you know, after a few cycles, it's going to go pink. Right, I've just been for another drive. Um, the engine is now nice and hot. These cars don't have a uh, temperature gauge on the dash, but uh, believe me, it is hot. I have the heater on actually, and I'm uh, going to turn it off because I'm sweating. Uh, whenever you do uh, work with coolant like, like this, especially if you're um, trying to get the level right, you should always um, run the engine with the heater on because that uh, uses the full cooling system because the, uh, the heater matrix is essentially part of the cooling system. You wanna make sure you're getting coolant through that and um, working out any possible air that's trapped in it, for example. Let's go have a look at the uh, overflow tank now. So I don't know how well you can see it. I'm just gonna pop this off. Remember, it is safe to take this off. Uh, so long as the whole thing's not trying to overflow, of course, but it is uh, not safe to take that off when it's hot. But this, this one's not under pressure, so it's okay. If I shine light in there, the level's gone up a little bit, and it is very, very, very slightly pink, which means that there's a bit of mixing happening already, and that will just continue. Okay, that's enough for this video. I hope that was helpful. Have fun.